Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Halloween, or it's almost Halloween. It's um, early October right now. Um, but you might be watching this around Halloween or whatever, you know, whatever time you like. If you like spooky, um, spooky topics. But either way, um, this is going to be the Cryptid Iceberg. Starting with Tier 1, the Discovered or Real Animal Cryptids, former Cryptids. Um, either way guys, if you like uh, videos like this, make sure to subscribe, it's free, it tells me to make more videos like this, and I actually only have a hundred subscribers right now. So if you want me to grow, that would help me out. Either way, um, let me show you the actual iceberg right here. Um, this is the iceberg. Starting out, um, we're going to be talking about the Pygmy Hippopotamus. Um, the pygmy hippopotamus is a species of small hippopotamid found in West Africa. Early reports of the animal in the mid-19th century misidentified it as a species of wild hog. It was formally described from skeletal remains in 1843 or 1849. And the first live specimen was captured by British explorers in 1873, but died shortly after arrival. A live individual was finally exhibited to the public in 1913, having been captured by an explorer sent out by Carl Hagenbeck. And here's what it looks like. The pygmy hippopotamus. So, interesting. Uh, next up we have the Canterbury panther, which this one's a little bit more recent. Rumors of a big cat, Canterbury. Not sure where Canterbury is. Um, either way, how the debate about the Canterbury Panther began and how it might now be solved. Canterburyans have long questioned whether large cats are on loose in the South Island. Now there may finally be an answer, Stephen Walton explains. Jesse Fury was hunting near Canterbury's Ashley Forest in September 2020 when he looked across the gully and saw something he couldn't make sense of. He took a high shot at the unknown creature he'd spotted. It darted off at speed, leaving him slightly unnerved and joking he would not go into the forest alone again. It was his first encounter with the supposed large cat or cats that roamed the South Island certainly not his last. About a week later, Fury went back hunting and saw an unexpected creature again, this time about a hundred meters away. It was smaller than the one he had seen earlier, but this time it was running towards him. From about 50 meters away, Fury made a choice. He shot it. At that moment, Fury had finally done what so many others over the years had failed to do, produce evidence of Canterbury's supposed big cat or cats. So this was in 2020. So, let me show you the picture right here. Wow. Holy crap, look at that thing. So they didn't know there were any big cats. And where is Canterbury? That thing is huge. Another shot of the creature. Yeah, that's not it. Wow, okay. So basically around Canterbury, which, let me show you where. Canterbury is. It's a city in England, it says. Wow, what the hell? That's crazy. Alright, so moving on, we have next the giant forest hog. The giant forest hog is a species of giant pig, generally the largest suet native to wooded habitats across East, Central, and West Africa. Despite its size and range, it was not formally discovered until 1904. Although there had been sightings and reports since the 17th century, the first reports came in 1688. An explorer, Henry Morton Stanley, collected accounts during his final expedition across Africa. Although he never mentioned it in print, Stanley told Harry Johnston he had seen a huge black pig which Johnson thought might be a pygmy hippopotamus. Johnson himself also received reports of a large forest pig. 
specimen was finally obtained by Lieutenant Richard Minertagen, a soldier, ornithologist, and adventurer who had shown two recently killed individuals by natives of Mount Kenya, who was shown from whom he acquired skins and who finally came across a dead specimen near Lake Victoria in May 1904. So, here's what it looks like. Um, the Honkheim Turtle. Honkheim turtle was an obsolete or controversial taxon of turtle from Southeast Asia based on specimens from Honkheim Lake in Hanoi, Vietnam. Most experts classify this turtle as synonymous with the rare Yangtze giant softshell turtle, although some Vietnamese biologists asserted that R. liloi is a distinct species. If the two taxa are to be considered distinct, our Liloy may be considered extinct. The last known turtle, affectionately known to locals as Kurua, meaning great grandfather turtle in Vietnamese, was reported dead on 19 January 2016. A local man saw the body of the turtle floating in the water and reported it to authorities. The last turtle was spotted alive in, on 21 December 2015. So it's like a type of soft shell turtle. I'll show you exactly what it is. Here's what it looks like. So that is a real one, but now it's extinct. Oh well. Um, next up, Saint Bathan's mammal, and this one is actually real, but not scientifically identified. So the Saint Bathan's mammal is a currently unnamed extinct primitive mammal from the early Miocene of New Zealand. A member of the St. Bathan's fauna, it is notable for being a late surviving archaic mammal species. Neither a placental nor a marsupial, it also provides evidence that flightless, fully terrestrial mammals did not, did in fact once live in Zealandia. This is in contrast to modern New Zealand, where bats, cetaceans, and seals are the only non-introduced mammals in the otherwise bird-dominated faunas. St. Bathan's mammal is currently represented by three specimens in Te Papa, which is like a museum, I guess. National Museum located in Wellington. Composed of two lower jaw fragments and a femur. It was part of an assemblage of fossils recovered in St. Bathan's in 1978. It's a currently unnamed extinct primitive mammal. The Great White Wolf is up next. The Great White Wolf, frequently referred to and as and conflated with the Wahila, with the Wahila was a cryptid giant dog reported from Canada's Nahani Valley and Alaska. Desco described as an enormous, robustly built white wolf, it was reported by Frank Graves, a friend of Ivan T. Sanderson. Based on Graves' sighting, Sanderson speculated that the animal could have been a living bear dog, a group of prehistoric carnivores in the family Amphicyonidae. In 2018, however, Graves stated that the animal had been a Mackenzie timber wolf, a large Canadian subspecies of gray wolf. Then we have this. So it's apparently a Canadian timber wolf. Who knows? Surviving Chacoan peccaries. I've always liked the idea that a man named Ralph Wetzel discovered one of the newest large mammal species, the Chacoan peccary, quite recently.
this rangy big pig, as University of Connecticut biology professor Ralph M. Wetzel characterized his 1974 discovery, was a big surprise. A Pleistocene epoch survivor of a species thought to have died out 10,000 years ago, the Chacoan peccary, a relative of pigs, boars, and warthogs, weighed in at more than 100 pounds. The largest and most unusual of the three known peccaries, Wetzel found it in the wilds of Paraguay after interviewing the natives about a mysterious pig variously called Tagua Pagua or Cure Burro, Donkey Pig. Wetzel stated that it differed from other known peccaries by its larger size, longer ears, snout, and legs, and proportionately shorter tail. Spotted zebra. Spotted zebra, okay. A resurfaced picture of a rare polka dot zebra has wild the internet this week. What was this written? 2022. Spotted zebras are real people. There you go. What else? Surviving bone skippers. Thyrophora cenophila, commonly known as the bone skipper, is a species of fly native to Europe. It was once thought to be the first fly to be driven to extinction by humans, but rediscovered in 20, 2009. It has a bright orange head and is associated with animal carcasses where the bones are broken open. Interesting. The species was not recorded in the wild after 1850. It was long considered to be extinct. Reasons suggested for its disappearance include changes in livestock management and the loss of predatory megafauna. In either case, the scarcity of large carcasses and part with partly crushed bones, which would allow the insects to reach the medullary cavity in the bone marrow, denied the fly its likely breeding habitat. So it, it was rediscovered. So anyway, here's what it looks like. Oh. Like a big old fly. Interesting. Giant squid. The giant squid is a species of deep ocean dwelling squid in the family Architeuthidae. It can grow to a tremendous size, offering an example of abyssal gigantism. A recent estimate puts the maximum size at around 12 to 13 meters, or 39 to 43 feet for the American birds. For females, and 10 meters, okay, and 10 meters for males, so the females are a lot bigger, or 33 feet. From the posterior fins to the tips, to the tip of the two long tentacles. Longer than the colossal squid, at an estimated 9 to 10 meters, or 30 to 33 feet. So the giant squid and the colossal squid are two different squid, but substantially lighter. As the tentacles make up most of the length, the mantle of the giant squid is about 2 meters long more for females, less for males. And the length of the squid, excluding its tentacles, but including head and arms, rarely exceeds 5 meters, 16 feet. Claims of specimens measuring 20 meters or more have not been scientifically dis documented. The number of different giant squid species has been debated. But genetic research suggests only one species exists. The first images of the animal in its natural habitat were taken in 2004 by a Japanese team. Um, 
The closest relatives of the giant squid are thought to be four obscure species of neosquid in the family Neotuthidae, each of which belongs to its own monotypic genus, as with the giant squid. Together, both families comprise the superfamily Archituthidoidea, which is a, a superfamily of squid. Interesting. Giant squid is widespread, occurring in all of the ocean's worlds. It is all of the <laughs> world's oceans. Sorry. It is usually found near continental and island slopes from the North Atlantic Ocean, especially Newfoundland, Norway, the Northern British Isles, Spain, and the Oceanic Isles of the Azores and Madeira. To the South Atlantic around Southern Africa the North Pacific around Japan, and the Southwestern Pacific around New Zealand and Australia. Specimens are rare in tropical and polar latitudes. So in tropical and polar, interesting. The vertical distribution of giant squid is incompletely known, but data from trawled specimens and sperm whale diving behavior suggest it spans a large range of depths, possibly 300 to 1,000 meters. And here is a map of their known habitats. So that is going to be where the giant squids are most located. Now that's, that's interesting. <laughs> Which is, uh, that's my hot take, right? Obviously, it's interesting. Um, so it's, yeah, it's basically a giant um, squid. Here's another picture. And uh, we're pretty much just reading this from the, this Wikipedia page, actually. <laughs> So um, the giant squid is one that's well documented, well known. Here we have the Cameron Village Sewer Blob is up next, and this is real, but not scientifically identified. And it is this, this thing. So that is real. It is real. I'll read it. These amorphous, pulsating, blob-like beasts seem to have been ripped from the pages of a glorious old EC comic or a bad 60s monster movie, but scientists say that these mutant subterranean creatures are alive and well and living in a North Carolina sewer. They just don't know what they are. In April 2009, South Carolina-based Malfris Construction was contracted to send a surveillance camera into the sewer pipes beneath Cameron Village in Rayleigh, North Carolina. The purpose of this mission was to check the infrastructure of the sewer lines, according to an anonymous spokeswoman of Malfris Construction. It's like a large pulsating blob. Is this real? We are asked by our by our client to inspect the sewer lines, which were built in 1949, because the sewers are so old. There were many infrastructure issues. Beyond the concrete, sewage, and other expected ephemera, their cameras came across a completely unexpected discovery. Unidentified and undeniably grotesque blobs attached to the sewer wall. These creatures are so bizarrely unfathomable that some believe they might well have come from one of this, out of this world. Locals quickly dubbed the bizarre phenomenon the Cameron, Cameron Village Sewer Blob. Last sighting was 2010, North Carolina. 
After this strikingly disturbing footage was uploaded to the internet, it became an instant sensation. NBC, Fox, and ABC and other news agencies covered the story, prompting both skeptics and believers alike to pop out of the woodwork and discuss the real or fictitious origins of this entity. But it wasn't long before Rayleigh public works officials came forward and confirmed that this disconcerting video footage was indeed real. Yeah, there's no real pictures of it though, except the one. There's a couple like illustrations. I'm not sure those are worth showing though. Um, so we're just going to move on. Marvin the Monster. An unclassified 15-foot marine invertebrate filmed off California in 1962. The underwater robot Mobot, designed by Shell Oil Company to scan the seafloor for oil deposits, filmed an invertebrate sea serpent nicknamed Marvin during the 1960s. The place and year is given as either Oregon in 1963 or Santa Barbara in 1966, but a Californian press account exists from November 1962, alleging that the animal had been filmed around a month previously. Mobot's operators, watching the footage live from the drilling ship, estimated that the creature was 15 foot in length but only 6 inches or 15 centimeters in diameter and described it as moving with a distinctive corkscrew or spiraling motion stills from the footage shown that the animal was show that the animal was wound about by ridges thought to have been a colonial organism marvin was variably speculated by Los Angeles marine biologist to be a south chain, a tenophore, or a siphonophore, but identification was not possible based on the footage, and it remains unclassified. So that's what it is, Marvin the Monster. So they saw it, but it was never seen again. Giant Goldfish. The Daily Mail is reported that a legendary colossal orange koi carp was allegedly snagged in France and is thought to be one of the largest of its kind. Angler Raphael Biagini claims he got the surprise of his life when he landed a gigantic koi carp, which was said to weigh in at 30 pounds on a fishing trip to France. <clears throat> it's thought to be the largest ever caught in the wild so far. It took Raphael Bagini 10 minutes to reel the creature out of a lake in the south of France. Moments after he landed the beast, fellow anglers told him they had spent six years trying to snare the almost mythical giant goldfish. Bagini claimed to have no idea what he had caught at first, but he knew that it was immense. To begin with, we couldn't tell what was at the end of the line, but we knew it was big. Mr. Bagini, who has caught, caught many a giant carp in his day, claims he returned the orange fish to the water after having his photo taken with the trophy fish. Of course, this has led more than a few folks to look at the photo and believe it to be inauthentic. That having been stated, Ken Peterson, communications director at the Monterey Bay Aquarium, Claims that a koi fish this size and this color is possible if it has the right amount of food and enough space to grow. In fact, the largest koi on record weighed almost 90 pounds and was also caught in France. Whether it is the genuine article or another internet hoax remains to be seen. Here's what it looks like. So here's the guy, Bajini. That is a giant goldfish for real. On the real. So the next one is Xiphius. C 
Cuvier's Beaked Whale. In medieval folklore, the Xiphius, or water owl, has a monstrous nautical creature said was a monstrous nautical creature said to attack ships ships in the northern seas, as seen in the gallery below. It possessed the body of a fish and the head of an owl, complete with massive eyes and a wedge-shaped beak. Xiphius, meaning sword-like in Latin, may refer to beast's fin which was said to be able to cleave the hull of a ship like a blade. Interesting. Today, the inspiration for the Xiphius is known as Cuvier's Beaked Whale, the most widespread species of beaked whale, also known as the Goose Beaked Whale. This creature is found as far north as the Shetland Islands, the most northerly region, region of Scotland and as south as Tierra del Fuego at the tip of South America. It is the only member of the genus Xiphius which bears the name of its legendary identity. Some additionally attribute the inspiration of the Xiphius to the orca killer whale or the giant great or the great white shark based on certain depictions of the beast as a predator to pinnipeds. So uh, here we have an, ins uh, an illustration of the Xiphius. Here, here is an actual picture of the real thing. And then up here, I suppose this is this is also it. it doesn't quite look like it has uh, much of a beak there, but um, that is the Xiphius. So next we have the purple-necked wallaby. Scientists in Australia in mid-October said a mysterious pur purple kangaroo thought to be a legend does actually exist. A biologist named Lesouf claimed to have discovered the species in 1924, but experts ignored his claims. Researchers from Macquarie University in Sydney, however, announced during 2001 that the wallaby does exist and has purple around its neck and on its face. They have caught, they have called it the purple-necked rock wallaby. There's no picture though. It is not yet known how and why the purple pigment is produced, but it has been found to wash off in rain before reappearing. Department of Biological Sciences researcher Dr. Mark Eldridge said, no one believed Lesouf. Everyone just said, no, they can't have purple necks. They must be rubbing themselves on some rock and getting this funny coloration. Because it is secreted through the skin, once the animal is dead, the pigment rapidly fades. So by the time Lesouf got the specimens back to Brisbane or Sydney from North Queensland, the color had gone. It just looked like a very plain, normal-looking rock wallaby. Using genetic technology, the Macquarie University team found the animal was indeed an entirely new species. That's the, uh, the purple neck wrong. Let's find a picture. Sure, purple neck. And a picture that actually shows its neck being purple. That's a good picture. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to. Here. That's a pretty good one. That neck looks purple. So yeah, so that's what it looks like. His neck, his neck's pretty purple. Anyway. Um, next we have Bonda Gazoo. The Bonda Gazoo, also known as Dingiso, was a legendary and ancestral spirit of the Moni people in western Papua New Guinea, 
Described as a tree-dwelling creature, the Banda Gazoo resembles a small man covered in black and white fur. It was also said to have a white belly and a black head, back and limbs. It is said to be a tree climber, but often stands on the ground in a bipedal stance. In the 1980s, a photograph of the actual animal Banda Gazoo was sent to Australian research scientist Tim Flannery, who initially identified the creature as a young tree kangaroo. But in May 1994, Flannery conducted a wildlife survey of the area and discovered that the animal in the picture was new to science. Dingaso is a forest-dwelling marsupial with bold coloration that spends most of its time on the ground. It lives in alpine forest in the Sudermen Range at elevations of 3,250 to 4,200 meters, just below the tree line. For now, Dingasu listed as endangered species in IUCN Red List. Look, here's what it looks like. Dingasu. Not the coolest cryptid. Dingasu, the the Bondigazu, man of the forest. Um, so next we have the Turner Beast. The Turner Beast is a creature that has been described as a husky looking wolf with bulky shoulders, big eyes, a flat snout short mangled ears, and a bushy tail. Before it was proven to be a hybrid, some researchers claimed that it could possibly be a dire wolf. It was spotted in Turner, Maine, and was estimated to weigh about 120 pounds. It has been known to kill pets and livestock, mostly dogs, most likely for territorial reasons. Later DNA testing of the animal in the pictures revealed it to be a wolf-dog hybrid. Looks like we've got a couple of pictures here. Kind of gruesome. I don't know if that actually you can show that on YouTube. Um, uh, whoops. Either way. <clears throat> um, next up is the Australian snubfin dolphin. Australian snubfin dolphins are dolphins found off the northern coasts of Australia. It closely resembles the Irrawaddy dolphin and was not described as a separate species until 2005. The Australian snubfin has three colors on its skin while the Irrawaddy dolphin only has two. So it just looks slightly different from a real dolphin. Here's what it looks like. Next. That one's not that cool. Phantom kangaroo. This is another one that is real but not scientifically identified. Phantom kangaroo is a report of kangaroos, wallabies, or their accompanying footprints in areas where there is no native population. Some explanations put forth are escaped zoo or circus animals, as in the UK, or publicity stunts by local businesses using photographs from Australia. Others suggest outbreaks of such sightings are a form of mass hysteria. Um, France, a population of feral red-necked wallabies, often misidentified as kangaroos, live, lives near the township of Imance, Imance, about 50 kilometers southwest of Paris. These wallabies are descended from a breeding population which escaped a zoological reserve in the 1970s. Japan, between 2002 and 2011, there was a series of phantom kangaroo sightings in the Mayama Mountain District of Osaka, Osaki, Miyagi City in Miyagi Prefecture. New Zealand, in 1831, after arriving in Australia, two sailors from the Sydney Packet reported that they had seen a giant kangaroo 30 feet tall at a small cove in Dusky Sound, South Island. From a small boat, they observed it standing near the tree line, and when they came too close, the animal jumped into the water and swam away, leaving a wake extending from one end of the, other, of the sound to the other. That sounds like an acid trip. 
United Kingdom. Documented colonies of red-necked wallabies exist in the United Kingdom. A breeding colony established itself after breaking loose from a private zoo in Leek, Staffordshire, in the 1930s. Their population seems to have peaked in the 1970s, reaching numbers between 60 and 70. There were no confirmed sightings of the wallabies between 2000 and 2007, with some locals believing they must have died out. In 2009, newspapers reported wallaby sightings, including clear pictures that made references to sightings in 2008. <coughs> in recent years, BBC News has documented numerous wallaby sightings across the U.S. and across the U.K. So they straight up have wallabies. United States. In 1934, near South, South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, so not the, not the real Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh, Tennessee, an atypical kangaroo or kangaroo-like beast was reported by several witnesses over a five-day period and to have killed and partially devoured several animals, <coughs> including ducks, geese, and a German shepherd and other dogs. Kangaroos are typically unaggressive and vegetarian. A witness described the animal as looking like a large kangaroo running and leaping across a field. The search party followed the animal's tracks to a mountainside cave where they stopped. The animal was never found, and the national news coverage drew widespread ridicule. So that was in 1934. And then it seems in 1974, 1978, 2013, there have been various sightings of kangaroos or kangaroo tracks in the U.S. as well. So that's the phantom kangaroos. <clears throat> Next up we have Hogzilla. Hogzilla. Okay. Hogzilla is a giant pig who was shot and killed by a hunter named Chris Griffin in Alapaha, Georgia, on Ken Hollyuck's fish farm and hunting reserve. It was a male hybrid of a wild hog and a domestic pig, reported to be over 12 feet long and weighing over 1,000 pounds. It was originally considered a hoax. In March 2005, it was revealed that it was only 800 pounds and was between 6.9 and 8.6 .6 feet long, but nevertheless, is still a monster subject. There is also another big pig known as Fred, who was shot and killed by a 12-year-old boy named Jameson Stone on a game reserve that, according to hunters, weighed 1,051 pounds and was 9.4 feet long. True dimensions are disputed. The boy used a Smith & Wesson model 550 caliber revolver and shot it nine times before killing him with a headshot. Apparently, the reserve purchased him from a farm who was selling off all, selling all their pigs. The Corsi hog is a hog shot and killed by William Corsi in Fayetteville, Georgia that weighed over 1,100 pounds. Hog Kong was a giant pig that weighed 1,140 pounds when shot on a farm near Leesburg, Georgia. Big Bill was a pig who broke a leg in Jackson, Tennessee and was put down when he weighed 2,552 pounds. He also holds the record for largest pig ever. Tun Pig was a pig from China that weighed 1,000 pounds. 1,984 pounds and died from lack of mobility because of obesity. Big Norm was a pig who grew to 1,600 pounds and grew to 8 foot 4 inches. They are no longer considered decrypted. On freedomarms.com on the trophy freedomarms.com on the trophy board a man named Robert Finucci posted a picture of a wild boar that he took with his FA-500 Wyoming Express revolver. So I'll show you some of these pictures. Uh, I was trying to get a 
better picture. It doesn't really, doesn't really look. Okay, yeah, there you go. So that is real. And pigs are aggressive too. So this thing would, I mean, this thing would eat you, man. That thing would eat a human being. No, no doubt. Absolutely, it would kill and eat you. Not even a, ch not even like a, wouldn't even have to be a kid. Straight up adult. All right, so that's Hogzilla. Excellent one. <laughs> we have Roman sewer crabs. Roman sewer crabs. came as a surprise to the world of crab-loving people when in 1998 Massimiliano Scalici and colleagues at the University of Rome Tre saw the river crab beneath their city, the biggest city in Italy and one of the biggest cities in the world. One imagined their first temptation was to catch them, which is ultimately what they did, some of them, some of them anyway, where no crabs were thought to exist. Scalici and colleagues found hundreds looking up at them out of their long stalk eyes. Interesting <clears throat> <clears throat> picture here. Roman sewer. Let's find a picture. <clears throat> They just didn't know they were there, I guess. So don't um, fall in the sewer at night, I guess. <laughs> I wonder how they taste. Oh, it tastes like shit. So, Roman sewer crabs, Hogzilla. Next up is Tylery Yeti crab. Here's what it looks like. The Tylery Yeti crab. After the discovery of the, of the Yeti crab, scientists at the University of Southampton began to wonder if there were other species in the newly discovered genus Kiwa. However, many ecologists, including some of the discoverers of the first Yeti crab, doubted other species existed and believed that Kiwa was just a single species genus. After expeditions to many underwater trenches across the world, two new species of the crab have been discovered, thus adding to the former cryptid list. And here we'll see the Yeti crab. So, formerly thought not to exist. Oh, it's okay, I guess. Wakesha's butterfly creature. Here's what that looks like. The Wakesha butterfly creature. Interesting. Also known as the Wakesha Lagerstadt, Brandon Bridge Lagerstadt, or Brandon Bridge Fauna, is an important fossil site located at Waukesha and Franklin, Milwaukee County. County. Oh, this is the Waukesha. This is the page for the actual fossil site. So what's the actual creature? The butterfly creature. just about a site where they found um, 
some fossils, but nothing really about a butterfly creature. I mean, maybe this thing, the actual... Yeah, it said an enigmatic, enigmatic arthropod. So this is something that was seen at the site, I guess. Something that was found. Next up, we have the Congo peafowl. Peacocks. Peafowl, as peacocks, refers specifically to the males of the species. Peacocks are native to Asia. A species that is familiar to most people is the blue peacock, also called the Indian peacock, because it is from India. It is tolerant of cold weather and easy to keep, so peacocks of this species have been introduced to many parks and gardens. The other familiar species is the green peacock. So it's just peacocks? Was that ever thought to be a cryptid? I don't know about that, man. I'll show you the peacock. So, yeah. African peafowl. So I guess the issue is the thing is that they're they're native to Asia, and it was kind of surprising that they found them. For most of history, everyone assumed that all species of peacock had been discovered, and that peacocks were not native to any place other than Asia. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Nobody expected to find another species of peacock existing naturally anywhere else. Especially not in Africa. However, feathers like a peacock's, especially, except that they were in a slightly different color scheme, were coming from the Congo. Alright, I'll show you what it actually looks like. Here you go. That is an African peacock. So that's sort of interesting. And when was that discovered? It was in the same remote region where the Okapi was discovered. the Okapi. So it came from the same region as that thing with the striped legs. The sort of half a zebra animal with the zebra striped legs but the brown body. Monster of Ada Sigan Lija also known as the Beast of Ada, of Ada Sigan Lija and the Ada Sigan Lija Shark. was a creature sighted swimming in the Sava River near the shore of Ada Siganlija in Belgrade, Serbia in July 2021. So it was a shark that was found in Belgrade, seen in Belgrade, Serbia. It was it's also supposedly had a wound on its head. The creature was soon identified to be catfish. And here's what it looks like. I don't know, that doesn't look like catfish to me. It doesn't look like a catfish to me. Um, what's next? The Ufiti is a female chimpanzee from native folklore of Malawi people and reported to live in Nakata Bay. Nakata Bay is on the western shore of Lake Nyasa, Malawi. Chimpanzee is native of Congo jungle, far away from Malawi. The nearest colony is in Nakungwe Mountains of Tanzania, which is still far enough. So reports of the sighting is ignored until it's captured near Limpasa River, which surprised zoologists. Graffiti reported to be curiously watching the road and the bridge construction in the vicinity of Limpasa River shortly before its capture. So it was watching the road and bridge construction. This is a photograph of the Popular Science Monthly Report in 1961. So that was when this all went down. Huh? In 1960, they captured a live specimen. So the Ufiti. 
interesting. Surviving saber-tooth deer. Long prized by Afghan hunters for their scent glands, the Kashmir musk deer was feared extinct, and all living deer were considered cryptids until 1948. But a right of Nikolay Usyk of a captured male Kashmir musk deer. The Kashmir musk deer is very unique in, in appearance. Unlike the gentle grazers of the Americas, the males of this species have fangs protruding from their mouths. Scientists believe they use them fighting other bucks during mating season. These deer measure about two to three feet tall, weigh between 15 and 37 pounds, and are extremely hard to spot in the wild because they don't group together in herds, but seem to remain mostly solitary. Here's a picture. Saber tooth deer. Damned. Real cryptids. Alright. Darwin's hawk moth. Up next. The gigantic hawk moth, endemic to Madagascar, was discovered in 1882. Its existence, however, was predicted 20 years earlier and nearly 5,700 miles away by Charles Darwin, as he sat in his London office inspecting an unusual Star of Bethlehem orchid sent by a colleague. The specimen featured a foot-long nectar spur, with the nectar itself pooled only at the very bottom. Good heavens, Darwin wrote in a letter to a friend, what insect can suck it? Darwin declared that scientists would one day discover the orchid's co-evolutionary partner, an insect with a foot-long proboscis. Two decades later, they did just that, documenting a subspecies of Afri African hawk moth that handily demonstrated Darwin's theory of co-evolution, by which the development of two species is driven or modified by the other. The Academy's first Darwin's Hawk Moth is mounted alongside a star orchid. It enables us to discuss the, the coevolution of plants and their pollinators, says Senior Entomology Collections Manager Norman Penny. And it reminds people that we can't make even selective cuts in a forest without breaking down the web of life that exists in that environment. So anyway, I'll show you what it looks like. Here is the this Darwin's hawk moth. It's a moth with a foot long proboscis. Interesting. Next we have the Kellis cat. The Kellis cat is a large black cat found in Scotland. It's an inter it's an interspecific hybrid between the Scottish wild cat and a domestic cat. Once thought to be a mythological wild cat, with its, f with its few sightings dismissed as hoaxes, a specimen was killed in a snare by a gamekeeper in 1984, and found to be a hybrid between the Scottish wild cat and domestic cat. It is not a formal cat breed, but a land race of felid hybrids. Interesting. It is named after the village of Kellis Moray, where it was first found. So I'll show you a picture of it. There you go. That is the Kellis cat. Next we have the Mountain Gorilla. Mountain Gorilla, for centuries tales of large ape men in East Africa have captivated explorers and natives alike. Numerous tribes have legends of massive hairy creatures that would kidnap and eat humans, overpowering them with their ferocity and strength. The creatures go by many names, among them Nagila, Nagagi, and Indigina. In the 16th century, English explorer Andrew Battelle spoke of man-like apes that would visit his campfire at night. Nile explorer John Hanning Speak recorded stories of vicious hairy Virunga mountain ogres who squeezed women to death in 1860 
and in the same year as explorer Du Chailu wrote of violent, bloodthirsty forest monsters. Up until the 20th century, many of these tales were ignored or discounted. In 1920, German officer Captain Robert von Bering shot one of these man-apes in the Virunga region of Rwanda. Bringing it back to Europe with him, he introduced the world to a new species of ape, the mountain gorilla. So interesting. So they really thought that was a cryptid at first, huh? That thing. The mountain gorilla. Ape men in East Africa. So that was the, the deal. Um, ape men. They, they, they were like, whoa, holy shit. Gorilla has a cryptid. Here, I'll show you a picture of a... There's a gorilla sort of described, illustrated as a cryptid. A gorilla does make a good cryptid. I will say. Then there's another mountain gorilla. I mean, that that thing is like I can see like how seeing that in real life. If you're in the 1800s, 1700s type shit, you'd be like, oh, 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 oh. You'd be like, oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah. No. I mean, no shit. Right? But yeah. So mountain gorilla. So. Next up, we have Chilean Blob. The Chilean Blob. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry, excuse me. The Chilean Blob, or Chilean Monster, <coughs> or Monstruo Chileno, was a large mass of tissue found on Pinuno Beach in Los Muermos, Chile. Chile, in July 2003. It weighed 13 tons and measured 12 meters or 39 feet across. The Chilean blob made headlines around the world because biologists were initially unable to identify it and were speculating that it was the remains of some species of giant octopus, previously unknown to science. The blob was the subject of a number of conspiracy theories. In June 2004, although no cells remained in the blob, fragments of the DNA found in the blob were found to match that of a sperm whale. The blob was a large mass of adipose tissue, also known as body fat or simply fat. The partial remains of a dead sperm whale. Scientists concluded that the whale had died several months prior and that its carcass had been eaten until only its tough collagen fibers remained. So I'll show you a picture. There's the Chilean blob. I mean, that'd be cool. That washed up on the shore. Poke it with a stick. You know? Hey, mom, look what I found. Take a selfie with it, you know? That'd be dope. Um, so yeah, so the Chilean blob, what's next? Here we go, we got the Grigstown cow. You saw that? <clears throat> the Grigstown cow is a mysterious cow that is part of New Jersey folklore. It was reported to inhabit the Millstone River floodplain and the Grigstown lock of the Delaware and Raritan Canal in Grigstown in central New Jersey. It was originally thought to be an urban legend, but in November 2002 was discovered to be a living black and white bull that had been roaming in an area where cattle are not normally found. So that's kind of interesting. Can't really get it much bigger. For 30 years, there had been a legend of a ghost cow that wandered the areas around the Millstone River floodplain and Grigstown. The cow had seen many times, had was seen many times, but only on foggy nights or other times of poor visibility. And many tales were told by local hunters and hikers along the canal path. No spore or tracks were ever found. Some fuzzy photographs were ever taken, but they were all inconclusive. At the time the area was 
mostly suburban homes and open fields, and the canal was now a state park, and walking trail so reports was now a state park and walking trail, so reports of a lone, ownerless cow wandering a suburban park for decades were greeted with suspicion by local authorities. The cow became known as a sort of Loch Ness monster of New Jersey and believed to be a myth, much like the Jersey Devil. This changed on November 23, 2002, when a New Jersey Water Authority employee phoned the DNR Canal Park office and reported that he had not only seen the Griggstown cow, but that it was lying in a ravine not far from the canal. Employees of Griggstown Fire Department, the State Park, and the New Jersey Fish and Wildlife Service were dispatched, and to their surprise, surprise found a very old, weather-beaten bull that met the description of the ghost cow. The cow seemed mysterious because it was only spotted on days of poor visibility. Presumably the Griggstown cow's failing eyesight is responsible for the few recorded sightings. It probably just couldn't see as well on foggy days and was less likely to notice encroaching humans before they spotted it. The bull had fallen into the ditch and was either too old or too arthritic to get out. There had been no dairy farms in the area for decades, and no one had reported any missing livestock. The only answer was that this bull had been living in the floodplain all this time, since the days when this was a dairy farming area, foraging for food and avoiding human contact for three decades. Thirty years ago, this area of New Jersey had a burgeoning dairy industry. Obviously, at least one cow escaped and went feral leading a secretive life in the park's verdant woods. It is unknown whether the Griggstown cow was the single cow responsible for all of the sightings, or if it was only the latest in a long line of feral cows. Efforts were made to extract the bovine, and rescuers managed to hoist the bull onto ground level. Onto level ground. Unfortunately, the animal was extremely weak. Video and photographs were taken, a local veterinarian determined he was in poor health and nothing could be done, and it was decided to euthanize the animal. The ghost cow of Griggstown was buried not far from the Griggstown Lock, near his home, and is still a part of New Jersey folklore. So, once again, I'll show you. That was interesting. So for 30 years, people saw this cow you know, but only on days when it was foggy and misty. And, uh, and then eventually they just thought it was a cryptid, but eventually they found it. So next up, the Arizona Jaguar. <coughs> the Arizona Jaguar, or North American Jaguar, is a subspecies of jaguar native to Arizona in the southwest United States. It was thought to have been eliminated by 1960, but occasional sightings of jaguars have persisted. Wow, really? The Arizona jaguar ranges from the southwestern United States to Central America. They are relatively smaller in size compared to the jaguars of South America. By 1960, jaguars were thought to have just, just disappeared. Jaguars were thought to have been eliminated in the United States. Sorry, the uh, the screen buffered. Um, jaguar hunting in Arizona was outlawed by 1969, but today only a small number of jaguars roam wild. All jaguar sightings are of males, the last female being shot in 1963. So the Arizona jaguar, real cryptid. Very interesting. Very interesting. Moving on. The Newfoundland Blob was a globster that washed up on St. Bernard's Fortune Bay in Newfoundland on August 2, 2001. The specimen was 5 foot 6 inches long, and analysis in 2002 showed that the Newfoundland Blob was a portion of a sperm whale corpse. Okay. So the same thing as the, same thing as the other blob. Hopefully, when we get down to the lower tiers, some of these will be more interesting. Um, hope. Mm. Um, we 
have the St. Augustine Monster. The St. Augustine Monster is the name given to a large carcass originally postulated to be the remains of a giant octopus that washed ashore on the United States coast near St. Augustine, Florida in 1896. It is sometimes referred to as the Florida Monster or the St. Augustine Giant Octopus and is one of the earliest recorded examples of a globster. The globster or blob is an un unidentified organic mass that washes up on the shoreline. Okay. So a globster is like a whole sub, sub, you know, cryptid, like a sub cryptid. There you go. Anyway, so that's the St. Augustine blob. St. Augustine monster. All right. Now we have the B, the Bitatawa. The Bitatawa, or Northern Sierra Madre Forest Monitor, is a large arboreal frugivorous liver, lizard of the genus Xerinus. The lizard's known range is currently limited to the Sierra Madre Forest in the northeastern coast of the island of Luzon, Philippines. How's that a cryptid, though? It's just a really big lizard. It's closely related to the Komodo dragon. It's a 22 pound, 10 kilogram, 6.6 6 foot lizard. So it is a big lizard. So I'll show you what it is. It's a big lizard that lives in the Philippines. Really big lizard. I don't know if that necessarily qualifies as a cryptid. But we'll give that one to him. Oh, the B the Beta Tawa. Next up we have the platypus. Of course, that's gonna be you know, we're on the top level. So the platypus we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, the platypus was once considered to be a cryptid because it has the characteristics of a reptile, mammal, and bird. Platypuses, platypi, and platypodes are also considered acceptable plural forms, were first encountered by Europeans in 1798. Okay. So they have a duck bill, obviously, they're mammals that lay eggs. Really interesting creatures. They have, uh, like, they're venomous, too. Um, so there it is again, platypus. Beautiful. Um, then we have Urquim. The Urquim is a cryptid bear reported from Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula. Although initial descriptions of its enormous size and unusual limb proportions led to the theory that it could be a short-faced bear, more recent revelations have suggested it is a unique form of brown bear. Okay, so the Urquim. There you go. There's a picture of it. And, um... We will move on. Next up is... Goldie's Marmoset. Goldie's Marmoset, or Goldie's Monkey, is a small South American New World monkey that lives in the upper Amazon basin region of Bolivia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru. It is the only species classified in the genus Calimico, and the monkeys are sometimes referred to as Calimicos. Goldie's marmosets are blackish or blackish brown in color, and the hair on their head and tail sometimes has red, white, or silvery brown highlights. So they're just like little monkeys. The strange humanoid creature was commonly spoke of within the tribes of the jungle of Peruvian and Brazilian Amazon. This creature, known as the Chulacachi, Chulachaki, Chulachaki, was said to be a short, beastly man with backward spiked teeth, backward spiked feet, that was as dark as night and lived deep within the jungle. It was said to persuade his victims to follow it deep into the jungle where even experienced trackers could not find their way back. It did this by disguising himself as a prey animal. Its uncanny ability to replicate others makes it impossible to tell apart. 
except for its odd feet. So interesting. So they had some legends about this. Um, this monkey um, as a sort of like little man in the forest or something. Relative to other monkeys, they show apparently primitive features. They have claws rather than nails. Is that a, that's a Goldie's Marmoset also. Okay. Okay, okay. So Goldie's Marmosets. Next up we have the Zuyo Maru Carcass. The Zuyo Maru Carcass was a corpse caught by the Japanese fishing trawler Zuyomaru off the coast of New Zealand in 1977. The carcass's peculiar appearance led to speculation that it might be the remains of a sea serpent or prehistoric plesiosaur. Although several species scientists insisted it was not a fish, whale, or any other mammal, Analysis of amino acids in the corpse's muscle tissues later indicated it was likely the carcass of a basking shark. Decomposing basking shark carcasses lose most of the lower head area and the dorsal and caudal fins first, making them resemble a plesiosaur. Okay. We'll show, show it. There you go. So that is the... The Zuyu... Zuyo Maru. Zuyo Maru Carcass. Next we have Trunko. <coughs> Trunko is the nickname for a large, unidentified lump of flesh or a decomposed sea creature, a so-called globster, reportedly sighted in Margate, South Africa on 25 October 1924. The initial source for Trunko was an article entitled Fish Like a Polar Bear published on 27 December 1924, edition of London's Daily Mail. The animal was reportedly first seen off the coast battling two killer whales, which fought the unusual creature for three hours. It used its thick, its tail to attack the whales and reportedly lifted itself out of the water by about 20 feet. Interesting, interesting story. One of the witnesses, South African farmer Hugh Balance, described the creature as looking like a giant polar bear due to what was thought to be dense white fur. The creature reputedly washed up on Margate Beach, but despite being there for 10 days, no scientist investigated the carcass while it was beached. So no reliable description has been published. And until September 2010, it was assumed that no photographs of it had ever been published. Some people who have never been identified were reported to have described the animal as possessing snowy white fur and an elephantine trunk. Commenting on the photos, paleontologist Darren Nash wrote, They show that it was the rotting carcass of a large vertebrate, most likely a whale. The idea that this was really the body of a white fur trunked sea monster stems from naivety about the appearance of rotting animal carcasses. The photos are somewhat ambiguous, but the enormous bulk of the carcass, the, wide, the large amount of what looks like frayed, badly decayed collagen, and the presence of what seems to be a mostly obscured internal skeletal framework suggests that this is another globster, a rotting mass of whale tissue. So here I'll show you. So I can see why he thought, oh, it's like a furry, white furry, you know, because it kind of looks, kind of looks white and furry. Bit. Kind of a little bit looks looks white and furry. We have Cerro Azul Monster next. The Cerro Azul Monster, also variously referred as to as the Panama creature, Panama Monster, Panama ET Blue Stream Monster or Blue Hill Horror is a creature photographed near the town of Cerro Azul, Panama in September 2009. Okay, we'll show you that. That's the picture of it. 
A group of four or five teenagers aged between 14 and 16 claimed to have been playing near a cave in Cerro Azul, Panama, when the creature emerged. They say that it approached them, and fearing for their safety, they attacked the creature with sticks, killing it. They claim that they then threw its corpse into a pool of water before leaving the area. They later returned and took photographs of the creature's corpse, before sending the pictures to Telemetro, a Panamanian television station. Virginia Wheeler, writing for The Sun, claimed that the discovery sparked fear and confusion in the town. According to some sources, subsequent photographs were taken of the creature after it had fairly further decomposed. However, doubts have been expressed about whether the later photos were of the same specimen. Hmm. Here's, here's a photo a few days after it dried up, it says. So we have the second photo there. We have another close-up of its face. Not pretty. Definitely not pretty. So, some kids basically found it. It was a body. The creature's corpse was recovered four days after the encounter. A biopsy was performed. The biopsy concluded that the creature was in fact a male, brown-throated sloth. So I'll show you what it looks like here. It was a dead sloth. Oh well, the Cerro Azul monster. Uh, what's next? What's next? Okapi. The Okapi. Oh, we've seen this. Central African tribes and ancient Egyptians described, described and depicted a bizarre creature for centuries, colloquially, colloquially dubbed the African unicorn by Europeans. It is known locally by such names as the Ati, or the Oapi, resembling a cross between a zebra, a donkey, and a giraffe. Despite descriptions from explorers and even skins, Western science rejected the existence of such a creature, viewing it as nothing more than a fantastical chimera of real animals. Determined expeditions uncovered nothing, and it would seem the African unicorn was just as mystical as its namesake. This changed in 1901 when Sir Harry Johnston, the British governor of Uganda, obtained pieces of striped skin and even a skull of the legendary beast from the Congo. Through this evidence and the eventual capture of a live specimen, the animal now known as the Okapi was recognized by mainstream science. The Okapi is no less unusual today. It is the only living relative of the giraffe, sharing a similar body structure and its characteristic long blue tongue. However, the markings on its back legs re resemble that of a zebra's stripes. They are solitary creatures that remain captivating to scientists. Although not endangered, there is still much to learn about their habits and lifestyle. So that's the Okapi. We, we, saw, we looked at that earlier. Um, but yeah, the Okapi. Next we have the Deep Sea Spider. Deep sea spider was a deep sea cryptid, an arachnid like invertebrate seen and photographed not in February 1989 at a depth of 13,616 feet in the Pacific Ocean off Peru by the Diskol expedition. Initially, researchers Hjalmar Thiel and Gerd Schriever tentatively identified the animal as a tailless whip scorpion which are strictly terrestrial. An alternate explanation was a sea spider with its overtures mistaken for an extra pair of legs. In 2006, however, Thiel and Schriever alongside Angelica Brandt, Marina Malutina, and Christian Borowski re-identified the animal as a species of Heropsaurus, an isopod. The photographs which show the animal attracted to bait represent the first evidence of possible carnivory in the detri detri detritivorous family Munopsidae. So the f its first carnivorous uh, behavior. So there it is, a sea spider. Little, uh, little real cryptid. 
real cryptid for you. We have the giant panda. You gonna tell me the giant panda is a cryptid? There it is, giant panda. That's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a cryptid, I guess, like somewhat. Sort of. Giant panda. Go ahead and skip that one. Everybody knows about a panda. Coelacanth. Coelacanth are an ancient group of lobe fin of lobe finned fish. I know about coelacanths. Basically, it's this fish that has not changed. Like its anatomy has not changed for millions of years. We have fossils of the coelacanth going back millions and millions of years. And we also have like living coelacanths today. So this is just um, a fish that has been around for a long time. And um, I don't know if they're good eating, but they, they probably are. Probably are good eating, I think. Um, I'm kind of dark. Why am I so dark here? Um, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, coelacanth. Next we have Tuttle Bottoms Monster. Tuttle Bottoms Monster was an abominable swamp slob reported from Saline County, Illinois in the United States, described as a hairy, often bipedal animal resembling an anteater or a bear. Although it has been considered a Bigfoot-like creature, according to cryptozoologist Virgil Smith, evidence indicates that it was probably a released giant anteater. Let me have a picture of a giant anteater here. So, sightings in 2010. There was a sighting of the Tuttle Bottoms monster. So they think that it was it's just a giant anteater. That uh abominable swamp slob. Why why would that That doesn't I, I'm not sure I understand how an anteater could be could look like an uh, abominable swamp slob. Abbreviated to ASS is a term coined by John Keel to describe crypto hominids, reportedly mainly from wetlands. Okay, so it's just um lives in wetlands. I don't know why that one just I, I just didn't I, that one kind of stumped me. Like how is that? I guess because it's it's rare we have the komodo dragon here so now i sort of understand like if um if that other lizard what was that other lizard the beta tawa if that was going to be a cryptid on on here then we also got to have you know the komodo dragon which is i believe the largest lizard in the world it's the largest known living lizard on earth also known as the komodo monitor Komodo dragons were first documented by Europeans in 1910, when rumors and sightings of a land crocodile reached Lieutenant Van Stein Van Hinsbroek of the Dutch Colonial Administration. So there you have it. Next we have the Montauk Monster. The Montauk Monster was an animal carcass that washed ashore on a beach near the business district of Montauk, New York. On July in July 2008. The identity of the creature and the veracity of stories surrounding it have been the subject of controversy and speculation. The creature was eventually decided by experts to be that of a water-degraded raccoon. That's a good-looking monster, I'll say. That's a good-looking monster. High-quality cryptid, for sure. See if that, uh, yeah, that 
gets a little bit better lighting, I think. So, yeah. Montauk Monster. Um, Moore's Beach Monster is next. Santa Cruz's Duck-Billed Elephant Monster, definitively identified. Okay. Here's a photo of it. Can't quite make heads or tails of that. I don't know what I'm looking at there. Back in 2008, I did a whole week of articles on sea monster carcasses. So this is just this guy. It's from his point of view. Oh, here's some better pictures of it. So this is sort of another sort of bomb. Um, what do we call them? Blobs? Blorbs? So it's some other marine creature that washed up on the... It's a good looking. Sharpest and most detailed image of the carcass I've seen. Yeah, me too. Here's, a, here's another one. Another image. Partially defleshed head. The Berardius that washed up on California's ocean beach. So they positively identified it as what? It's something called Berardius. Here's a picture of the actual animal. Just sort of large sea creature, sea mammal. That was um, just decomposing. There's another beaked whale. Here we go. Sorry, I just didn't want to read the whole article. Although I've read most of them. Uh, that's the Moore's Beach Monster. Surviving Victorian Grassland Earless Dragon. To turn off my ad blocker for this. Grassland Beardless Dragon. God, there's so many ads on this. Scientists find the extinct Victorian Earless Dragon not seen since 1969. Once thought to be gone from the wild, lizards will now enter a breeding program in an, in an attempt to save them from the brink of extinction. The Victorian Earless Dragon. Tiny Earless Dragon. Thought to be extinct in the wild has been spotted for the first time in more than 50 years in grasslands west of Melbourne, Australia. Um, so yeah, it was decimated by habitat loss and predators. Um, but now they found them again. And there's a, story, there's a tweet about it right there. That's what they look like. Interesting real cryptid. Now we have um, the Sakhalin Island Sea Wolf. It was a mutilated cetacean corpse that was found by Russian soldiers on the Sakhalin shoreline. Sakhalin area is situated near to Japan. It's the most eastern part of Russia, almost 5,000 miles to east from Moscow creature has been identified as a beluga carcass. According to a scientific survey, the bones and teeth are not of a fish. According to its skeletal remains, it was not a crocodile or alligator. Its skull resembled that of a canine, while the creature's rear coincides with that of a fish. However, the real identity can be concluded by looking at the skull. It's most likely some type of whale particularly a beluga or an orca, with the skull matching that of such creatures, the little notch in the skull being seen in one of the photos. I'll show you the photos. There's one. 
There's another. Another photo. Sea wolf, huh? Looks interesting. I don't know how they got wolf out of it. I guess it kind of looks like it has teeth. And in fact, it does have teeth. And so, yeah, if you see that, that looks pretty creepy. And that's what they thought it looked like. Let's see, wolf, huh? And what did it end up being? This cryptid is the direct inspiration for SCP-682. The carcass image was used to show what it looked like in a more destroyed form. The most likely explanation for this cryptid is that it's a decomposed whale. That's a good one. Pretty good one. Um, next up we have... Wild Spix's Macaw. And is that just... Wild Spix's Macaw 2016. In 2000, researchers thought they'd had their last glimpse of a Wild Spix's Macaw. <clears throat> a critically endangered bird formerly found in a small section of forest in Brazil's Bahia State. But a little over a week ago, a local farmer named Nauto Sergio Oliveiro spotted one of the birds near Caruca, <clears throat> reports Merritt Kennedy at NPR. Early the next morning, his wife and daughter hiked into the wilderness to catch sight of Little Blue. They returned victorious with a backlit but distinct video of the macaw. So it's just like a macaw that they thought went extinct in 2000. And then like in 2016, they like saw it again. So it's one that it went extinct and then they, they discovered it. A lot, of the, a lot of these are like that. A lot of these discovered and recognized ones anyway. So we have the Bermuda blobs, more blobs. Bermuda blob is a name given to two globsters that washed ashore on Bermuda in 1988 and 1997. Originally thought to be the remains of a cryptid, analysis performed proved the blobs to be remain the remains of whales. Oh man, they turn out to be whales, like the others. Or we think they are. That's what the that's what they were analyzed to be. So the one was in 1988 and one was in 1997. Mm -hmm. One in 1988 was found by Teddy Tucker, a fisherman and treasure hunter in Mangrove Bay. Um, he says they were about two and a half to three feet thick, very white and fibrous, with five arms or legs, rather like a disfigured star, he said. And then in 1997, found another one but they analyzed it and said it was a large mass of adipose tissue from a whale or fat tissue so there's that one and uh, there's there's the one in 1997 I guess I could show you that's the adipose tissue so we have that and next up surviving bush dogs the bush dog is a species of canid found in South and Central America. The genus Spiathos was first described by Danish paleontologist Peter Wilhelm Lund in 1839, based on fossil remains discovered in Brazilian caves, which he assigned to the late Pleistocene species, Spiathus passivorus. The genus was believed to be extinct until a living pack was sighted soon afterwards. Since then, they've been discovered in several more nations and states where they were believed to have been extinct. So in 1839, they discovered this this guy. Looks like he's got a little boo-boo right there. And they're, they're pretty cute. 
That's actually pretty cute, I think. I like that one. Um, the next one, Oleandi Monster. Oleandi Monster is a supposedly lost species of chameleon found in Tanzania. On February 25th, 1962, Peter Scott and John and Jane Hunter saw a large chameleon in Ngorongoro conver conversation area near Oldiani Peak, Tanzania. They captured it, and Scott took it back to England, where it lived for a full 18 months. Its remains were preserved a short time, with Scott taking them to several herpetology experts who were unable to determine the animal's identity. The remains of the chameleon were unfortunately lost at some point afterwards. That's what it looked like. There's a large chameleon. A brown chameleon with small red spots and a horizontal stripe across each flank. It had a small horn at the tip of its snout. And a long tail. And um, I got some other pictures of him. So this is uh, what he looks like. With that small horn. So he's not exactly so big, really. Not really sure how that's encrypted. If it's just like a chameleon. Um, but I guess that makes sense because the very last... The last creature on our list is actually kangaroo. I'll go ahead and read what this says. It's hard to believe that kangaroos were once cryptids. The first description of a kangaroo was made by Amerigo Vespucci in 1499. That's who, what America was named after, by the way, was that guy. When he was traveling along the south southern coast of Australia, he described it as a monstrous beast with the head of a fox, the hands of a man, the tail of a monkey, and a bag that is used to carry its young. Yep. In 1629, Francisco Pelsart captured a kangaroo, but it died on his voyage. It wasn't until Sir Joseph Banks rediscovered the kangaroo on Captain Cook's voyage in 1770 that the kangaroo changed from an enjoyable myth to an actual species. Okay, so there we got a picture of a kangaroo here. So... That is the last entry on the discovered and recognized animals slash former cryptids um, tier on this iceberg. So we're going to go ahead and end the video right there, guys. And the next, the next tier is well-known and documented cryptids. So we might continue with it. And, you know, I'm sorry if... Uh, Maybe there were little technical hiccups or, or anything uh, with this video. I am still a small YouTuber, so if you did like the video, just go ahead and uh, drop a subscribe. It's free. It helps out. It lets me know that you like this content to keep putting it out. And um, other than that, have a good day, guys. Thanks for dropping by. Happy Halloween.